Courtney and this is Simon and today is finally the day. <laughs> Simon has an appointment with Dr. Dan Johnson at Avian and Exotic Animal Care to get his Deslorelin implant. Yay! <laughs> so Simon is going to be chemically castrated with an implant under his skin versus getting the traditional surgical neuter. So we are about to go see Dr. Dan and get that done. Desmorelin is a hormone uh, implant that fools the brain, the hypothalamus and the pituitary. Sorry, we have some uh, <laughs> distractions. That fools the hypothalamus and pituitary into believing that they have already done their job. And the reason it works for both adrenal gland disease and for, shall we say, temporary chemical neutering of a ferret is that by fooling the pituitary into thinking it doesn't have to make its hormones, then the testicles, in this case, don't develop. If it was ovaries, they wouldn't develop. Uh, they'd still be there, they'd be healthy, but they wouldn't develop and do their job. So in a female that we give Deslorelin to, it will keep her from going into heat. And by keeping her from going into heat, it will prevent her from becoming anemic from estrogen toxicity. And by giving it to a male, it'll keep his testicles uh, from developing. And without developed testicles, he won't make testosterone and won't mark the house, won't smell as bad. If he was exposed to females, he wouldn't be aggressive towards them in a sexual manner. Um, actually, if we took uh, unneutered and unspayed female ferret and male ferret and we gave them implants uh, for a year, a year and a half, or even two years, as long as the implant is still working, uh, they wouldn't be able to breed. They wouldn't have the uh, hormonal stimulus to even breed. So Desilorelin is probably known to most people who have ferrets as the treatment for adrenal gland disease. And what's going on with adrenal gland disease is that neutered ferrets have an excess hormone production by the hypothalamus and pituitary. And that excess non-stop hormone production in the pituitary is acting on the adrenal gland and the adrenal gland is acting like a testicle or an ovary or both. Desilorelin does treat adrenal gland disease, but its other uses are preventing an animal from breeding. It's like an injectable form of birth control that lasts anywhere from a year to two years or more. Zoological institutions use it to keep primates from breeding. Uh, animals that they don't want to breed, they will give Deslorelin to. And that way they don't have to neuter them or perform surgery to get them to stop breeding, okay? Um, some zoos can't handle more animals than they have. So that's how this was kind of discovered as a alternative to neutering. Why do we want an alternative to neutering? That comes back to if you neuter a ferret, you'll promote abnormal high levels of pituitary hormones and hypothalamic hormones. And in many cases, that will result in adrenal gland disease. So by not neutering, we prevent adrenal gland disease. By using Deslorelin as the alternative to neutering, we're able to do what neutering would do and prevent adrenal gland disease all at the same time. So, martial ferrets are neutered at the, at the breeder, at martial farms. Uh, that's because an unneutered male stinks uh, can be aggressive, uh, will uh, scent mark and urine mark the house. Uh, an unneutered female ferret uh, will go into heat and stay in heat 
being in heat for too long can cause her to become anemic. So there are reasons that Marshall neuters their ferrets, neuters and spays, castrates and spays their ferrets, and that is because neutered ferrets are better pets. Unneutered ferrets are associated with certain problems. Neutering solves those problems, but it promotes another problem, and that's adrenal gland disease. The Desilorelin should be given, uh, I am told, and experience is proven, in the spring of their first, their first spring after birth. So if a ferret was born in June or July of this year, it's not going to go into, it's not going to reach maturity until next uh, February, March, April time frame. Uh, we recommend the first ever Desilorelin be given no later than February or March of the year after it was born. Okay, now there is no harm in giving Desilorelin at four or five or six months of age, but you definitely want to give it before it reaches its first spring. And that means definitely getting it done by March of the first year after it was born. I've got Desilorelin packet here. I'm going to tear it open. Show that there's a gigantic needle on there. Mm. The applicator attaches to it. And if they look inside the tip, I can get the Desilorelin to come right up to the opening. See that? Mm -hmm. All right. And it's in there from about here till about there. Little waxy plug. Okay. We're gonna set him sternal, like so. And you're gonna scrub him like that, okay? All right. And I'm going to give his Desilorelin right here. Then I'm gonna build it. Yep, but I got stuff. <laughs> Oh my god. One, two, three. In. And it's in now. Give the implant. Pull Good out. Good job, buddy. I know, I know. And then we put a drop of adhesive here. Good. Okay. Done. Oh, it does. Oh, it does. Okay. So it's been a couple months now since Simon got his Desilorelin and I wanted to take some time to talk about the differences from before Desilorelin to after Desilorelin. And I waited a couple months because it does take some time to completely do its job and get into his system. So physical characteristics. Before Desilorelin, he had large testicles. He had a really gross urine kind of smell to him and that musky smell that ferrets get it was just more <laughs> than usual and he was really big and muscular so after Desilorelin his testicles are now much smaller here Simon I'm sorry about this but we have to educate people okay can you see them they're just a lot smaller. See, I know, I know, baby. It's for educational purposes. <laughs> I know, I'm sorry. Okay. He does not smell like urine anymore. Yes. And that musk is now toned back. He still has the fair musky smell, but it's not nearly as bad. And he has lost some weight, but I'm not sure if it's due to Desilorelin or it's due to the fact that it's just summertime here. So I'm not sure Desilorelin's role in that. So let's talk about the behavioral differences. So before Desilorelin, he scent marked my house like everywhere. And it was so gross. <laughs> he would go to like a toy on the floor and just dribble on it like, that's mine now, mom. I'm like, dude, <laughs> my house. Oh, my house. I was following him around with my little carpet cleaner. Um, he would do this thing also called what my breeder calls Hobbs song. And it's basically a way 
that ferrets flirt with the ladies. So let me play you an example of that. Okay, so it's really cute, actually. I, I think it's adorable. Um, he also would bite me harder before Tesla Relin. It was like hormonal biting. He would, for instance, bite my arm and kind of hold on like he was going to drag me off somewhere and have his way with me versus a lot of ferrets, you know, that kind of do the play bite thing. So more biting and more intense. And when he would play, I noticed it was less interactive with me and more kind of running around the house. So he would run to the front door, or he would run to the back door. I don't know, maybe he was just looking for a woman. <laughs> I'm not sure, but it just seemed kind of restless versus um, just, you know, playing with me and interacting when I throw toys and things like that. He would hump his toys mainly um, one or two in particular, and he would take them in his kennel and kind of have some alone time for about 30 minutes in his kennel. <laughs> and so, I mean, at least he kind of went away to do that. Um, and also training was affected when he was really hormonal. It was like he couldn't focus. His brain was just on, on women or whatever, and he couldn't, he couldn't do that. So we... Just took a break when he was like that. There's no need to um, force um, something when it's just not there. It's not It's not good for them. So now let's talk about after Desla So behaviorally, he does not sit, mar sit mark my house anymore. Yay! Like, that's the biggest deal. I, I like my house a certain way, and without ferret pee on it, it's amazing. <laughs> So no more scent marking. He doesn't do his hob song anymore, which, you know, is kind of sad because I did think that was cute. He still dukes and laughs and all that. So, yeah. All right. So he only play bites now and he's getting much better about that. He'll also kind of do his little love bites, but he no longer bites so intensely and, and holds on. His play is more interactive. Um, he chases me, you know, interacts when I'm playing with the toy more. So he's not pacing around the house like he was before. So he, he just seems kind of more chill, more relaxed. He's not humping at all, which is great. He gives, he gives more kisses. Yes, my sweet boy, give me a kiss. He's like, mom, I'm not kissing you. You showed my testicle on the video. I know. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. And his t attention span is getting better for training. Um, it's not perfect. I mean, he's still young, but I do. I have noticed that that it's a little bit better now. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's been educational. I know here in the United States, you may not get the option of um, doing Desilorelin versus doing the surgical spay or neuter unless you have a privately bred ferret. I understand that, but I still wanted to get the information out there so people knew that it was an option. And thank you to Dr. Dan Johnson at Avian and Exotic Animal Care for helping me out with this video. If you like what I do, please subscribe to my channel, share it, comment, all that good fun stuff, and we'll see you again next time. Bye!